Okay, so here's a knot video that I've been wanting to do for some time. I use a loop knot, a crazed loop, to connect my jig head to my leader line almost 99% of the time. So here I have 15 pound floral leader. This is the leader I use, by the way, STS, Seaguar, very economical, and I can't really tell the difference in terms of performance between this and the blue label. So. And I'll just pick jig. Let's see. Let's go with that. Ooh. All right, this is a Picasso tungsten jig head and it's a round ball quarter ounce. Okay. So to tie the craze loop first, what you need to do is make an overhand knot. All right, very simple. Now, I pull the overhand knot pretty small. Okay, we can still see that. And now, holding the jig head like this, come on, focus. I pass it towards me. Okay, you pass it through, and then it goes back through the loop, through the overhand loop. Okay, so you have something like this. Now, the size of your final loop is determined by the distance between the eye of the jig and the overhand knot. So if you start tying your knot here, that's how big your loop is gonna end up. I, generally speaking, pull the knot down, almost down to the eye. And then I start my, my wraps with the knot pretty close to that eye. And what you want to do is wrap it around three times. So one, two, three, and here. All right, I'm gonna test the focus on this camera. So now it goes through the smaller loop towards you, okay? right there, but not through the big loop. Okay, I really hope you guys can see this. Okay, and then you wanna wet your knot now. Okay, pull it down. and then tighten it up. And I usually bite on the tag end while I'm cinching the main line. So now you get a, see that, that's the loop, that's the loop knot. And trim the tag end off. Now the good thing about the craze loop is your tag end points down instead of pointing up, which if you're fishing in a lot of vegetation, has a huge advantage. So this size of loop is pretty much perfect. I can not even go a little smaller than that. And this is what you want, a small loop. And if you're using really light line, the small loop is going to stiffen up and act almost like a split ring or a solid ring. You don't want a giant loop up here, and I'll show you what a giant loop looks like, which I see a lot on YouTube, and that's that's not what you want. This, this creates a lot less drag. It looks neater. Just imagine how big a split ring you would put on an eye like that and size your knot accordingly. Now, a loop knot, especially using baits like this, where it's a straight tail, kind of jerk shad. This is a Kitek shad impact. Just gonna thread it on real quick. This bait has no action on its own. So really the correct retrieve for this bait, you could just kind of hop it along. But what you wanna do is 
pop the slack line on your rod tip and you, you're you basically jigging through the slack and this jig is gonna come up through the water column and it's gonna go crazy. When it falls, when it reaches the apex of its height, it's gonna turn because the weight is in the jig head, right? The weight is all in front. It's gonna turn and it's gonna fall back down. While it turns, it's gonna do a little shimmy if you have a loop knot, especially if you're using heavy line. Um, if you're tying like a polymer or a cinch knot with really light line, like six pound test, it doesn't make as big of a difference. But even 15 pound line, if you're locking that knot to the jig head, it is impeding this motion of the jig, right? The shimmy. And in my opinion, this, while it falls, while it goes up, unimpeded, especially on slack line, is a huge triggering aspect of, especially a base like this, with no real built-in action. There's no curly tail or paddle tail. And the good thing about this type of bait is you can accelerate it off the bottom a lot faster and if you know what you're doing, you know, especially when fish are not feeding, it's a pure reaction bite. And then if you're gonna use sort of a finesse presentation like this for fluke fishing, fluke aren't line shy. So you can go 15 pound, 20 pound test, that's fine. But you need that loop knot to give a bait like this its full range of action. Now, why do I use a loop knot instead of, say, a tactical angler's clip? The reason I prefer loop knots instead of some kind of snap or swivel is because I can actually feel that, especially when I'm using my more sensitive rods. And the only hardness I want to feel coming from my bait, my jig, is either a fish hitting it or I'm hitting some kind of muscle bed, some kind of hard bottom. I find this sensation of the metal creaking and hitting the metal clip very distracting while I'm fishing. You know, if you have a loop knot, there's no vibration coming up your line from your knot connection, right? There's vibration if it hits bottom, if it's sandy bottom, if it's rock, or when a fish hits it. And that's the only kind of hard material, concussive vibration I wanna feel when I'm fishing. You know, you can hear that, and you can definitely feel it if you have a sensitive rod, or if you're tuned in to your jig, you want nothing there. So this is what I see a lot of. It's a loop about that size. That's crazy. Okay. You don't need a loop that big. And you see, even in 25 pound test, it's kind of collapsing the line. You know, if you have your line really small, a small loop, it's, it's stiff. So that versus that. That is way too big a loop. This loop is what you want. 